I'm Michael Paluska. A few weeks ago, we took you into some of the most polluted springs across the state of Florida, full of algae. We also swam in some of the clearest waters that I've ever seen, magical places. But for this follow through full circle report, we have a little bit of good news. One area that was considered failed by many, Crystal River, is now thriving because of the hard work of a lot of dedicated people. have completely flipped this system. We've got beautiful clear water and lots and lots of grass for all of the manatees to eat. To date, we have restored uh, nearly 90 acres, but it's actually taken off to over 300 acres now. If you think about that number, that's a lot. I mean, if you had to plant the extra 210 acres. <laughs> yes, that'd be another, yeah, that, that'd be another who knows how many years. So we're eight years in and we've only gotten 90 acres done. And, you know, our sea and shoreline biologists are in the water for hours and hours uh, planting grass and sucking up muck. And we've taken a lot of time and we take a lot of pride in this work. And it's really, it's really paid off. Jessica Maye was recently promoted to Senior Environmental Manager at Sea and Shoreline. Her new title and role comes with a lot more responsibility. As they finish planting eelgrass in Crystal River, the work and a new phase is starting up. But Kings Bay is roughly 600 acres, so we will continue. The goal is to keep moving downriver, keep planting grass. The manatee tours, the eco tours, they've all really benefited from this clean water. The Kings Bay project is something that will go down in history. It is uh, one of those success stories that they know, they've seen it firsthand, how bad it was. No water clarity, you couldn't see the manatees. There was no grass and, and now these guys can make a living and enjoy seeing manatees and showing people from around the world these manatees in this healthy ecosystem day in and day out. But for all the crystal clear springs we enjoyed, there are plenty in dire straits. Like this one, Peacock Springs. Weeks before I jumped in, local divers told me the water was clear, but nutrient overload and a lack of flow let this bloom take over. Swimming a challenge as the algae blocked the light and my view, the slimy scum clung to my hands. In North Florida, post spring along the Santa Fe River is green. Strings of algae dance in the current. Scientists tell me it hasn't been blue for decades. And Sulphur Springs here in Tampa, a different location closer to home, but with the same sad story. Once called the Coney Island of Tampa Bay, it's been closed since 1986 because of pollution. A man-made swimming pool now in place of what nature gave us for free. But this doesn't have to be the future for our springs. It's really incredible what happens when you give nature a chance. This is a tiny piece of eelgrass. Divers will plant about 10,000 of these a day. There's five in the water in front of me. And the crazy thing is this thing can grow to about seven feet, nurturing manatees in this entire ecosystem. Do you like to be called an underwater gardener? <laughs> or is there a cooler term that you like? I don't know if there's a cooler term. Being an underwater gardener is probably one of the coolest things ever. <laughs> It's exhausting. Yeah, there's hours and hours under the water. Um, you're on either a snorkel or you're on surface applied air. You're swimming miles and miles a day. You have to come and check on the grass. Um, we maintain the cages that a lot of this grass is planted under. We have to scrub it, make sure that there's enough light availability getting through. The only thing you don't have to do is mow your grass. We do not have to mow the grass. We have manatees for that. <laughs> Maye's laugh is contagious. <laughs> Alex, you want to come grab these bags real quick? <laughs> we saw her spirit shine through all day with her team. And there is a reason to smile and celebrate. To date, 450,000 tiny pods of eelgrass were planted by hand, 600 million pounds of muck vacuumed out, decades of decayed plants and animals rotting on the bottom blocked seagrass roots from taking hold. But in the process, 870 clogged spring vents are now clear. Some of them have been clogged for so long and left so many of these areas stagnant now there's more flow in some of these areas so there's a lot more water movement 
movement is life. At its worst, manatees avoided Crystal River. Now thousands come in winter. About a hundred stick around to enjoy their underwater salad bar year round. There's a lot of doom and gloom out there, but this is one of those uh, high hope stories. We want to spread that throughout the state. It takes a lot of effort, but we can we can get back. <laughs> we can we can get back what we've lost if we uh, put forth a lot of effort. In Crystal River with photojournalist Reed Moeller, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.